It's time for the health segment. And it's, of course, necessary for us to discuss coronavirus, especially because since the outbreak in December, uh, statistics indicates that currently about 25,000 people have been infected with a uh, little close to 500 of them actually dying from the disease. And um, here in Ghana, no case has been recorded. But then again, the question has been that are we well equipped uh, for an outbreak if there should be one? And also, how much knowledge do you have about this particular issue in order to protect yourself? And so before I introduce my guest to you, the WHO has been working with governments and partners and some global experts on how they can expand scientific knowledge on the virus just so that we can also protect ourselves and know what to do in order to prevent an infection. And so I'd want you to watch this short movie and right after that I'll introduce you to my guest. There was a cluster of pneumonia cases in China. Investigations found that it was caused by a previously unknown virus, now named the 2019 novel coronavirus. In this video, we'll take a quick look at what's currently known about the virus. Keep in mind that this is a new virus, and what's known about the virus now might change in the future. Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses. They consist of a core of genetic material surrounded by an envelope with protein spikes. This gives it the appearance of a crown. Crown in Latin is called corona, and that's how these viruses get their name. There are different types of coronaviruses that cause respiratory and sometimes gastrointestinal symptoms. Respiratory disease can range from the common cold to pneumonia, and in most people, the symptoms tend to be mild. However, there are some types of coronaviruses that can cause severe disease. These include the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, first identified in China in 2003, and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus that was first identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. The 2019 novel coronavirus was first identified in China. It initially occurred in a group of people with pneumonia who'd been associated with a seafood and live animal market in the city of Wuhan. The disease has since spread from those who were sick to others, including family members and healthcare staff. There are many cases at present, and the disease has spread within China and also to a number of other countries. So, where did the virus come from? It's known that coronaviruses circulate in a range of animals. Sometimes these viruses can make the jump from animals to humans. This is called a spillover and could be due to a range of factors such as mutations in the virus or increased contact between humans and animals. For example, MERS-CoV is known to be transmitted from camels and SARS-CoV from civet cats. The animal reservoir of the 2019 novel coronavirus is not known yet. How is it transmitted? The exact dynamics of how the virus is transmitted is yet to be determined. In general, respiratory viruses are usually transmitted through droplets created when an infected person coughs or sneezes or through something that has been contaminated with the virus. People most at risk of infection from the novel coronavirus are those in close contact with animals, such as live animal market workers, and those who are caring for people infected with the virus, such as family members or healthcare workers. So, how does the disease present? Well, from what is known so far, there can be a number of symptoms ranging from mild to severe. There can be fever and respiratory symptoms such as cough and shortness of breath. In more severe cases, there's been pneumonia, kidney failure, and death. The mortality rate is not known yet. How can we tell whether someone is infected? The infection can be diagnosed by a test called PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. This test identifies the virus based on its genetic fingerprint. There's currently no specific medication for the virus, and treatment is supportive care. There's currently no vaccine to protect against the virus. Treatment and vaccines are in development. How do we prevent transmission of the virus? This new virus currently has a limited geographic spread. However, there are a number of standard hygiene practices that have been recommended to protect against infection and further spread. These include covering your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing with a medical mask, tissue, or flexed elbow avoiding close contact with those who are unwell, the appropriate use of masks and personal protective equipment, especially in a healthcare setting, washing hands regularly with soap and water or alcohol-based hand rub. 
Actions that can be taken to prevent infection from an animal source include avoiding unnecessary unprotected contact with animals, washing hands after contact with animals or animal products, and ensuring that animal products are cooked thoroughly before they're consumed. It's important to stay home if you're feeling unwell, but if you have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early and share your previous travel history with your healthcare provider. That's a quick look at this emerging infectious disease. Given that this outbreak is evolving rapidly, what's known about this virus can change. Please check the websites below for the most up-to-date information. And that's a video put together by the World Health Organization, again, to expand scientific knowledge on coronavirus. And now in the studios, let me introduce you to my guest, Reverend Professor Kwame Nasego. Uh, he's a public health and molecular, molecular virologist, associate professor in the Department of Medical Microbiology, University of Ghana Medical School, College of Health Sciences. Good morning, Good morning. and thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for inviting me. I'm sure you're also equally dis disturbed about, you know, the outbreak of coronavirus. Thankfully, it's not here in Ghana yet. We're praying that it doesn't get here. But in order to understand what coronavirus is, we first of all need to refresh our memories on what exactly a virus is. And so if you can please touch on that for me. Well, uh, I'll try and make it as simple as possible okay. for everybody to understand. But you see, viruses are particles, let us let me call them particles, that live independently, that cannot live independently. Mm. That is, they, they cannot live and grow by themselves. Okay. They need living environments to grow. So, for example, you can have a plant virus, you can have um, viruses affecting insects, mm. but they need cells that are living okay. to be able to grow in. So, normally we call them obligate parasites, you know, because they, they can only grow when there's a living environment around them. I see. So, they have their own genetic material, but they cannot grow until they are found a living organism where they can use its, um, what it uses to grow itself, to be able to replicate themselves, to so grow themselves. So where do themselves. they exist then until they get in contact with Well, so yes, <laughs> uh, they, they, they normally, you normally have reservoirs. So yeah. for example, we are talking about the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So it has the reservoir, it's growing somewhere in a living environment, probably not causing any harm. Mm -hmm. But once it jumps into another environment. That's it, when it Yes, it, it can causes. change. I mean, so it could be anything that changes. It could be because it's moved out because it's changed, the genetic material has changed, like was suggested in the mm, film. Mm. It could be anything. If you can tell me more about the coronavirus, what exactly it is as well, um, I'd be glad. So basically it causes, usually, let's say it causes mild symptoms, respiratory symptoms, but occasionally we've seen two or three where the severe acute respiratory syndrome, and then we saw the mers -CoV. So occasionally maybe it may jump out of the animal population and mm -hmm. find itself into the human population. And it's not unique. Uh, okay. Influenza does that sometimes. So, and then causes um, severe disease or mild symptoms in humans, depending, as we are seeing now. So it is from animals? Yes. So the first mess the, the first two or three, what was determined and uh, detected in China, jumped from, um, I think, ty type of cuts into... Okay into oh, it was cats yes okay C civet cats mm. but cats into man and then this uh, the mess core is from supposed to be from camels mm. okay so this they are still question marks. when you eat them or when you just come in contact with them so in, in const it could be eating but you have this contact prolonged contact with animals so you find out that one of the prevention methods is that let's try and prevent unnecessary long contacts with animals if you have no business doing that. If I have pets, should I be worried then? <laughs> because if we're saying avoid prolonged contact. I, I don't think so. We are, okay. You see, the thing is that my thinking, or let me put it this way, it tells, for me, the lesson we learn is that we can have anything jumping from an animal population into a human population mm -hmm. to cause disease. Okay. And so unnecessary contact where it's, you've kept pets for a long time, yeah. you've not had any problems. Yeah. I think that is fine. Mm. But you go into a meat market where they are killing all sorts of animals, bringing there. You don't know where some of those animals are even coming from. Okay. We should always have in mind that we need to hold on to protocols that can help us prevent any spread. It's okay. basically called a zoonosis. Z okay. Uh, so you are having the 
it not, and it's not only viruses. You can have other microbes also jumping from the animal population into the human. We, I population. think we've experienced quite a number of them. Um, th this seems to be a new kind of virus because I'm sure the coronavirus has always been in existence. Yes. But all of a sudden, the whole world is talking about it, trying to find uh, a vaccine to it mm -hmm. and all of that. What makes it new and different? It's new because it's never been seen in humans. I see. And now it's also causing death fatalities, ah. and severe morbidities and fatalities. So it's obvious that people will be concerned. Um, so basically it's new in humans and this is the first time they've seen this kind of virus, coronavirus, causing okay. disease in man. But you're telling us that it spreads from human, to, uh, from animal to humans. The origins may have been, been from, from animals, animals to humans, but there's also, there's now evidence from what, we, what is going on that it's also transmitted from humans to humans. Otherwise we wouldn't have that high number, those high numbers of infections mm -hmm. across uh, China. All right. So living in Ghana, clearly we have not recorded any case yet. Yes. How do I prevent myself from, you know, contracting this? Virus? There's active surveillance going on okay. at the ports. Mm. Um, it may be somewhere. I'm not saying it's here, but the fact is, there's active surveillance going on. So okay. we are hoping that nothing has slipped out of the structures yeah. to be able to enter. So, so far we haven't seen anything to prove that the virus exists or anyone has been infected. But there's flu in the air. There's flu started before the coronavirus I, I caught started. a flu about uh, a week ago and I got worried. Uh, you got worried. <laughs> uh, you didn't have a fever, I suppose. No, I didn't have a fever. But then we're made to believe that if someone has the virus and sneezes into the air, then yeah. clearly anyone that comes into contact with that might also be infected. Okay, so that, that is my personal concern. Yeah. Because now we are, have an active surveillance system in the country for influenza by Noguchi and the ministry. Mm -hmm. Now this addition is now going to create another burden because now you are not looking at only influenza you are looking so when you have symptoms you're you're not sure yeah. which one is it so yes it shows that we should seek treatment early okay. and we shouldn't take a cold as a cold so especially if, depend on your travel history if you've had any travel anywhere where you think you may have come into contact with mm. it when you seem to be having a cold you don't take it as one of those things you know because normally when we have colds we say that we'll wait yeah. They give you they say drink water, water take honey, a lot of lemon food, and etc. And, and it and get eventually some off the resolves. Medicine yes. as well. That is not enough anymore. Uh, well, you see, travel history is important, especially for this new coronavirus. Yeah. So if you have traveled and you came back, and maybe you were not picked at the airport as having a mm. flu, and you think you're having a flu, it is for you to be able to report to the health system, the health, whichever health mm -hmm. system you have. To make sure that, and then you should be frank. You see, we should be frank with the people. If you go there and just say, oh, I think I have a cold, tell them that, well, you went I to China. Came. I went to this place, and I think that it could be anything. So this is what I suspect. Because then that also guides the, the practitioners, the health okay. practitioners, to know how to handle what But at least if you're not feeling, you know, feverish, then you're fine, hopefully. I, I want to emphasize on the history. That you need to, okay. All right. Your but history... I would want to emphasize on the history. If you've traveled anywhere where you think you may have come into contact with people mm. who have, were sick or the environment yeah. where you believe the coronavirus has spread, and I think you shouldn't take any cold Anything lightly. Serious. You should submit yourself right. for some sort How of else do we prevent it then? I taught my children how to wash their hands. Okay. If you come from school, the first thing you do is to wash it's your wash, hands. Yeah. Anytime you go and play outside and you come, you wash your hands. Mm. I think hand washing can do a lot of magic that we have no idea about. Okay. And so, for example, you've traveled through traffic, you've gone through people, you have seen people, you've gotten to the office, just wash your hands. Mm. Because as you sit in the office and you're using your computer or you are reading, the next thing is you're touching your nose, mm. you're touching your lips. Your fingers will roam everywhere. You have no idea where your finger... If you want to know how it happens, yeah. just imagine somebody having a common cold in a classroom or in a, a gathering or at work. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there are a chain of people who yeah. are now feeling that they have a cold or they are sneezing and they are coughing. So door handles, people can use formites. You call them formites. You hold handles with your hands after sneezing. Yeah. So we should try hard to 
keep washing our hands. You can use alcoholic rub, but I see washing hands as priority. Okay. And in case you don't have water and you are somewhere, you can use an exactly. alcoholic rub. Right. And then when you are sneezing, cover your mouth. I mean, etiquette. We were of told course. that when you are sneezing and you don't have, you can just use your shirt or something mm. to block your nose. But then all the the <laughs> infection goes on your shirt. If well, someone touches if, your if shirt, if that is an emergency, at least you would serve you prevent the spread. You see, the thing about aerosols is that you cannot see them. Yeah. So you may be inhaling things that you may not see. Then so I should wear a mask. I don't think that's necessary. The Asians <laughs> wear masks everywhere. I, I don't think it's a concern now to wear a mask. I think a mask is more especially needed for people who have come to direct contact with sick people I and see. have prolonged contact, maybe okay. caregivers who have prolonged contact with sad patients. Uh. But I've not seen any mask in town, thankfully. Not so yet. Not but yet. I mean, maybe people should start considering wearing the mask, especially if they are traveling. I think we should take the basic things. Okay. Washing our hands, okay. you know, covering your nose when you're sneezing, preferably with, like you said, with a handkerchief or something, something you can keep away from yourself. And doing those basic things that not touching your nose, your hand, mm. I mean, using your hands to touch your nose, etc. If you are sick, stay at home. Yeah. Because... And I always use the common cold we have as an example. One person in an office, in the next few days, everybody yeah. in the office. I passed it on to Johnny Hughes already. Oh, so you've, said, you've seen that already? Yeah. yeah. So, whatever, what do you think you could have done to prevent that? Well, uh, I, staying home, maybe? Uh, staying home is one. And, well, I Washing never sneeze. Washing your hands frequently, maybe using alcoholic yeah, rub I was always before doing holding that. things around yeah. because other people will also want to touch yeah. those things. Okay. Because if I touch these things and I move and I give it to one person, or I go around shaking hands mm, and I have a cold. All that affected. Yeah. Is, is the country ready to deal with this if there should be? I believe work is going on. I just heard yesterday some money has been voted million um, million pounds, to yes. do that. And then I spoke to the one who's handling the screening, the surveillance, the lab surveillance aspect. And he says that, well, they are protocols etc okay. so I think they are doing what they can my, my 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 concern is this that we can no longer wait for emergencies mm -hmm. that our health system should be such that if anything jumps from the animal population because we are not sure I mean if you look at the intervals between 2003 nothing happened mm -hmm. 2012 now, yeah. 2000, uh, 2019, 2012, 2019, okay. there are gaps. We don't know where the next one is going to come from. It may not be only coronaviruses. Yeah. So our health system should be robust enough. Uh, we should have places where we want to keep people, isolate people permanently, maybe across the regions, probably mm -hmm. the regional hospitals, and people trained and ready. Okay. So that if anything jumps from the animal population into the human population, if there's any epidemic of any sort, at mm -hmm. least we have people who are trained who can immediately attend to that. Okay. I, I don't think we have the luxury of waiting again. All because right. we need emerging diseases, diseases which keep co popping up, we, which we have never known before. I'm sure they'll keep coming. I'm not being a pessimist, but of I'm sure course. they'll still come. I mean, as long as humans and exactly. animals exist, they are in close be, contact with each yeah. other. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, and I've been speaking to Reverend Professor Kwame Natsego, public health and molecular virologist, associate professor in the Department of Medical Microbiology, University of Ghana Medical School, College of Health Sciences. And he says that wash your hands. Even when you sleep and wake up, wash your hands. <laughs> You'll never know. No, but wash, once you get into public, you get into contact. You yeah. should make a culture. I, I made that I get home. I wash my hands. Yeah. And I not because of coronavirus. Yeah. Maybe I get to the office because I've been through places, maybe seen people and said, hello, hello, hello. You wash your hands because you don't know what you're carrying all over yeah. the place. Yeah. So it should be a habit. It should be part of us. Try not to be touching your face. Try That's to give, going to be difficult. have good habits, sneezing habits. When you want to sneeze, you cover your nose with mm. at least a handkerchief or something, something you can fold, put back into your pocket. Okay. And then we should, if you're sick, stay home. Stay home. And see a doctor. Yeah. Okay, that's it. So if you have a cold, uh, don't treat it um, as something trivial. Just go see a doctor and be sure that you don't have any virus hiding in there uh, that could lead to coronavirus. And so that's it for the health segment.